in essence, right here, dual. Now, in your book, I want you to write this word. Because in Indiana, we call it limited agency. Limited agency. And you will see why when we get back. You can say dual if you want. It's kind of like the word ain't. I'll know what you mean. I'll just think you're an idiot for saying it. All right. It's called limited agent means I represent the seller and the buyer on the same deal that's the key part seller and the buyer on the same deal sometimes agents will call this a me me deal because i am getting paid on both sides if you do this on a small house it's called a mini me <clears throat> Come on, it's Monday, cut me some slack. So the agents will call it a me, me deal. In essence, you have two clients. Hey, what do you think you should offer? Well, I don't know, what do you think we should offer? Let me talk to my client. What do you think? Okay, we we're gonna offer this. Well, that's a good number, thank you. That's actually what it is. So now let's go back. 90% of your deals, one client, one customer, right? You could actually have two clients. I am a limited agency on this deal. I am getting paid as the listing agent and the selling agent. Sarah, this is what I was talking about when you asked that question earlier. Now that 50%, remember how I said we split it? Only now 50% goes to the modeling group and the BAC also goes to the modeling group. All right, that is lim or limited agency, dual. You are working for two people in the same deal. All right, now dual agency, limited, must be disclosed and approved by both the buyer and the seller prior to you doing anything so you have to have the seller say yes i you can bring the buyer and you have to have the buyer say i understand it's your listing but i still want to see it all right <coughs> so that is dual agency <coughs> must be disclosed undisclosed dual agency let me say it again, undisclosed dual agency is the number one violation of most agents. They forget, they get excited. The buyer calls them and says, hey, I saw your sign. Can you come show me the house? And you run over there and you walk in the house with the buyer and you forgot to ask if it was okay. That's a problem. That's part of my job. So I can go, hey, Aaron, did you get the signed listing agreement? And she goes, yeah, I did. Cool. All right. So it, it, and it can be denied, by the way. I've had it denied one time in my career. One time. The seller told me, I say, I called him up and said, hey, I got a buyer. The seller said, you know all of my financial information. I'd rather you not represent the buyer. I'm like, okay. So I called my partner and said, hey, Betsy, you need to take Stan, the buyer, to see John's listing, and he's gonna write an offer today. And I charged Betsy a referral fee, so I still made some money on it, all right? So they can say no. It must be disclosed and approved in writing prior to you actually doing it. You gotta do it. So when the buyer calls you and says, hey, I got your name on the sign, I'm in front of the house right now. 
you drive over to the house and you say, hey, you know I've got this listed, right? I know you know you just called me, but is it okay that I have this listed? And they're like, oh, sure. Sign the paperwork. Now let's go in and look at the house. All right? Must be disclosed in advance. And that takes us all the way over to um, the next thing, disclosed dual agency, uh, undisclosed dual agency. They're on page 149. Now, here's a loophole to this. If you guys all work for me and Christina has the listing, whose client is it really? Mine. And Charles brings the buyer and Charles works for me. Whose client is it really? Mine. But because I can separate those two agents inside of my agency, that is called in-house agency or designated there on page 149 and is not, let me repeat, is not a limited agency experience. There is no form required for that. That is called in-house. It is not outhouse agency because that's shitty. Ah, you got that one, I see. All right. So same buyer or same agent, buyer and seller is called limited agency. Same, two different agents inside the same agency firm is called in-house or designated. That is not limited agency. Thumbs up? All right. On page 149 is that term, the non-agency. We actually have a form for this because in today's world, <coughs> They automatically default to being your client unless they say, I don't want to be. This is one of the major changes that you guys don't know since you weren't in the business. But in about 2000, they changed. It used to be client walks in my office. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Let me start again. A person walks into my office. We treated them like a customer until they asked to be a client. Flip it. Now, a person walks into my office. I have to treat them like a client until they sign this form that says they are a customer. Everybody get what I'm saying? So now the default answer is positive. You're my client unless you sign a non-agency form, then I treat you like a customer. That was designed to protect the client or the public, which is the number one goal of license law, is to protect the public. When we talk about the uh, administrative laws with the state, I will tell you then, number one law, number one rule, number one thing to think about, protect the public. Whatever protects the public the most is the answer on the test, all right? So this change, in essence, they think protects the public. Treat them like a client until they say they wanna be a customer. And the only way they say that is they have to sign in your book a non-agency form that says, Cameron, you are not my agent. Good, I am now relieved of my responsibility to help you, okay? Now, is this only when they walk into your office physically face-to-face, -face, right? Right, I mean, if you saw a guy in the Starbucks ordering in front of you and you never talked to them, no, that's not. But if they come into your office and they go, hey, LaShawn, I got a question. And you, you, are say, okay, my, my you are client. my client unless you tell me and he's like oh no 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 
I really want to work with Cameron, but Cameron's sick today. I just got want you to answer this question. Okay, sign this form so that you can never say, LaShawna told me that and I'm now suing her. No, 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 no. There's the form that you signed saying I'm not your agent. You told me Cameron was. Yeah, I'm treating you like a client, a customer. Gotcha. All right. Now, suppose they ask a question that requires client privilege. Like, I saw the house. I want to work with Cameron. He's sick today. Would they take less money on that house? And you go, I can't answer that. Right. I have a ethics liability towards Cameron because he is a fellow professional and you would not want me to violate professional ethics. I can tell you it's for sale. That's customer. I can tell you where it's located. That's customer. But I can't help you. And if I do help you, two things to happen. One, I just created implied agency. And two, Cameron's going to come and punch me in the nose for talking to his client because I'm not supposed to do that. That is the number one violation. You cannot talk to another agent's client. And if I know that, I'm guilty of Article 1 of the Code of Ethics where I was soliciting another agent's client. So I literally would say, I can tell you where it's at. I can tell you how much it's listed for, but I can't help you. You got to call Cameron for that. Sorry. All right. 